Yeah, thank you very much for the invitation. Thank you for the introduction. That's really sad that I cannot be with you now, but I am happy that you managed to come. So my talk is about the complexity of the quantified constraint selection problem, and I want to and this is a joint work with Barnaby Martin. I want to start with a simple example. Uh, I think that we have an infinite set, for example, set of uh, natural numbers, and we have equality on this set. Then we may consider such a sentence, like we can use both quantifiers and then conjunction of two equalities. And we may check that this sentence holds for natural numbers. Or we may add one more equality and then we see that this sentence doesn't hold, so this is false. And then we may, yeah, for some reason I can hear myself a bit and that's a bit annoying. So uh, then we may consider a decision problem. Uh, given a sentence uh, like this, where we have all uh, quantifiers and we have conjunction of equalities. And we need to decide whether this sentence is true or false. And it's not hard to see that this problem is solvable in polynomial time, so it's easy. And then, instead of the equality, we may consider any other relation R. And then for other relation R, we get a different decision problem with probably different complexity. For example, if uh, uh, we consider this problem where instead of R we put disjunction of equalities, then this problem isn't complete, as it was proved by Badirsky and Chen. But if we replace disjunction by implications, this problem is P space complete. Okay, and what is the complexity of this problem? So here we have again implication, but this time two equalities share one variable Y. And I really like this problem because, first of all, it's a concrete question. The question is whether this problem is P space hard or not. This problem is easy to formulate. And it's open at least since 2007. And another good thing is that uh, this problem is really accessible to anyone. Like you can easily give this problem to a student and probably a student has more chances to solve it than you do. And I know this problem because uh, Hubi Chen suggested this problem as one of three concrete open questions uh, in computer science. Okay, so what is the complexity of this problem? In uh, 2010, it was proved that this problem is coin p hard. So the question was whether this problem is coin p complete or p space complete. And this year, with Barnaby Martin, we, prove, we proved that this problem is actually p space hard. And for me, it was just a cool problem, like at Mathematical Olympiad, you enjoy solving a problem. But uh, it turned out that the, it's not only a cool problem, it's also a final piece of a complete classification of the complexity for all relations that can be defined like this, that are definable by Boolean combinations of equalities. So you may consider disjunction, conjunction, negation of equalities, and you can define any constraint language, any set of relations using this, and then, uh, because of our result and because of classification by Badirsky and Chen, we know the complexity for any set of relations like this. So we know that for any set of relations, the problem is either tractable, so solvable in polynomial time, or in P-complete or P-space complete. Only these three complexity classes can be achieved. And that's why I really like the array and the algebraic approach, because sometimes you solve just one concrete problem, and as a result, you have a classification for a bunch of problems. Okay, so let's go back on Earth. Uh, from this moment, I consider only a uh, finite domain. So let A be a finite domain because for infinite domains, some problems can be even undecidable. Yeah, and we want to talk about algorithm and complexity. So let A be a finite set and let gamma be a set of relations on A, which we call a constant language. Then, in the same way as before, for every constant language gamma, for every set of relations gamma, I define a decision problem, QCSP over gamma, which is like this. Given a sentence, we have a uh, uh, conjunction of relations from gamma, and uh, we can use both quantifiers, universal quantifiers, existential quantifiers. And we just need to check whether this sentence holds, whether it's true or false. One example, if we are on three element domain and we have just one predicate uh, inequality on this domain, then we may consider um, such a sentence, right? For every X, there exists Y1, there exists Y2, such that all of them are different. And it's not hard to see that on three element domain, this is true. Okay, if you consider this sentence, like for every X1, for every X2, for every X3, there exists Y, which is different from all of them. 
and this is obviously false. But if we've mixed quantifiers, it's much harder to say whether it's true or false. But for this concrete example, you may check that this is true. Okay, anyway, uh, the main question I'm asking today is uh, what is the complexity of QCSP of quantified consensus section problem for different constant languages gamma? Uh, to convince you that this problem is uh, important, let me show you a big picture. So if we consider QCSP, it means that we use uh, both quantifiers and just one connectivity conjunction, like here. Or we may, we may consider a dual problem where we use both quantifiers and just one connectivity disjunction. And here we don't have a classification. We don't know complexity uh, for all constant languages gamma. So we know almost nothing. What we consider other variants, like uh, if you are allowed to use only existential quantifier and disjunction. You may check that this problem is actually trivial because unless uh, all your relations are false, the sentence is true. Okay, so here everything is trivial. Uh, another variant, if we allow to use only existential quantifier and conjunction, then it's clear that this is equivalent to usual constraint satisfaction problem because you have conjunction of relations and uh, you can use, so all your variables should be existentially quantified. So it's just CSP. And here we have CSP dichotomy conjunction. So we know that for any constraint language, the problem is either in P or in P complete. Okay, if we can use one quantifier and both connectivity, then this problem is either uh, trivial or in peak complete. And there is simple criterion when the problem is trivial. It's trivial if the core has one element. I don't want to explain what core is, but it's really simple. Okay, uh, the most uh, non-trivial variant here in this table is uh, when we allow to use both quantifiers and both connectivity. And here we have, uh, Tetrachotomy. Yeah. So uh, we can achieve four complexity classes, P and P complete, co and P complete, and P space complete. But in fact, this classification is rather simple, and even the proof is rather simple. And the last case is uh, when we allow to use everything, like right? we can use both quantifiers, both connectivity and negation. And here the problem is P space complete unless uh, your constant language is trivial. Okay, so if you look at this picture, this table, you will see that the only open question is uh, the complexity of the quantified consensus section problem. Moreover, you can see that uh, the complexity uh, classes we can achieve here are rather simple. It's like P and P coin PP space. You cannot achieve something exotic. And that's why QCSP is interesting. Okay, let's go on. Uh, I'm going to reduce quantified CSP to usual CSP. That's why let me explain uh, how we um, calculate the complexity of the constraint section problem. So again, let A be a finite set and let gamma be a set of relations. On A, we should call a constraint language. Then CSP is just the following decision problem. So for every gamma, I define a decision problem like this, given a conjunction of relations where each relation is from gamma, and we need to decide whether this formula is satisfiable. And as was mentioned earlier, it's equivalent to this. We just essentially quantify all the variables. So given a sentence where all the variables are essentially quantified and we use only relations from gamma, we need to decide whether it holds. Uh, okay, to uh, explain how uh, to characterize the complexity of CSP, I will need one notion, probably it's well known, but let me give this definition. Uh, if we have an operation on a set A, we say that an operation preserves a relation R, or equivalently, we say that F is a polymorphism of R, or shortly, F is in pole of R. If uh, for any tuples from the relation, if we uh, write these tuples as columns, uh, if we uh, apply our operation R, F to these uh, columns coordinate wise, we should get a tuple which is also from the relation. So if F satisfies this property, then we say that F preserves relation R, or F is a polymorphism of R. And then uh, if F preserves every relation from uh, gamma, we say that F preserves gamma, or equivalently F, we write F is in pole of gamma. Okay, and now we are ready to formulate this speed dichotomy conjecture. So from 2017, we know that uh, uh, CSP over gamma 
is soluble in polynomial time if there exists a weak non-anonymity operation, operation preserving gamma. And CSP over gamma is NP complete otherwise. And here you can see the definition of a weak non-anonymity operation. So this is any operation satisfying this property. If you put access everywhere but one place, it doesn't matter where you put Y, you get the same result. As an example of a weak unanimity operation, you may consider disjunction, conjunction, majority, minority, X plus Y plus Z, zero, minimum, and so on and so on. So all such operations are weak unanimity operations. And uh, you may uh, consider the theorem as a uh, like fact that whenever we have some symmetry on our constant language, the problem can be solved in uh, polynomial time. In all other cases, the problem is as hard as in general, so it's NP complete. Okay, so for CSP, we have a complete classification of the complexity. And now what we know about the complexity of quantified CSP. Uh, the first uh, easy observation is that if gamma contains all relations, then QCSP is P-space complete, because it's not hard to reduce from uh, quantified Boolean formulas to quantified CSP over gamma in this case. Okay, so uh, for QCSP, we get another complex class P space. Uh, another uh, simple fact is that if gamma consists of linear equations in a finite field, then QCSP over gamma can be solved in polynomial time. So what it means, if you have a system of linear equations and you add uh, quantifiers to the system, uh, not only <clears throat> existential, but any quantifiers, this problem is still solvable in polynomial time. So you may check in polynomial time whether this uh, Sentence, ho sentence holds or not. OK, another easy observation is that uh, we can always add uh, one element to our domain, like star element, which we never use. And if we never use this element, uh, this makes the universal quantifier useless. Because if you use existential uh, universal quantifier, it's always false. And so by adding this additional element, we can make QCSP equivalent to CSP. And that's how we can achieve another complex class, NP complete. So what we know, we know that QCSP can be soluble in polynomial time, can be P-space complete, and can be NP complete. And uh, uh, we must, may ask whether there are other complex classes that can be defined like this. OK. Uh, there are some complex classifications for CSP, and the most important is uh, the classification for two-element domain, for Boolean case. Uh, uh, it is known that for two-element domain, for any constant language, the problem is either in P, so solvable in polynomial time, or P space complete. There are many other classifications for graphs. Yeah, I just show you uh, for different types of graphs. And uh, you may see that uh, the only complexity classes that can be achieved are P and P and P space. Okay. So uh, what we want to do, we want to uh, describe the complexity for any constant language gamma. And to do this, we need the following observation. Suppose we have two finite constant languages, gamma 1 and gamma 2. And assume that uh, each relation from gamma 1 is de definable from gamma 2 using quantified conjunctive formulas. So by formulas like this. Then it's clear that QCSP over gamma 1 can be polynomially reduced to QCSP over gamma 2. And this reduction is simple. If you are given a sentence in gamma 1, then you just replace every relation from gamma 1 by the uh, corresponding formula. And that's your reduction to QCSP over gamma 2. So that's how you can go from one constant language to another. OK? And then it was shown uh, that gamma 1 is definable from gamma 2 if and only if each surjective polymorphism, you still, uh, you already know what polymorphism is. So each surjective polymorphism of gamma two is a polymorphism of gamma one. So what it means? It means that the complexity of quantified CSP depends only on surjective polymorphisms. So um, we saw that the complexity of CSP was described in terms of polymorphism. We know that whenever we have weak and new polymorphism, the problem is easy, and in all other cases, the problem isn't P complete. And here we also know that the complexity can be described in this way. But here we can use only surjective polymorphism. Okay. And uh, another definition we are going to use today, like if we are allowed to use uh, uh, only existential quantifiers, then such formulas are called primitive positive formulas. 
And actually, this is the uh, definition we are going to use in our talk instead of quantified conjunctive formulas. So we say that, yeah. Okay. So let's discuss two questions. What makes QCSP easy and what makes QCSP hard? Uh, to answer this question, I want to show you the main reduction that allows to reduce complexity from P space hard to something easier like P or NP. And uh, to explain this reduction, first I want to show you an easier problem. Instead of QCSP, I consider the pi to restriction of QCSP, where first uh, I have universal quantifiers, then I have existential quantifiers, and that's all. So this is a pi to restriction. Uh, if we need to solve this problem, then what we need to do? If we just read this sentence, it means that for all evaluations of axis, I need to check whether there exists a solution to the corresponding CSP like this. Okay? And uh, like in general, this doesn't help because in general, we need to check exponential many evaluations of axis and this algorithm would still be exponential. But what if sometimes we don't need to check all of them? So the question is how many tuples uh, it is sufficient to check to be sure that this sentence holds. And actually it turned out that we don't need to check all of them in some situations. And to describe the situations, I need uh, one algebraic notion. For an algebra, um, for an algebra, so for set of operations F on a set A on domain A, I um, denote by DFM, the minimal size of a generating set of A to the power N. So what it means? It means that uh, how many tuples we need to generate all tuples from A to the power N if we apply our operations from F coordinate wise. One example to make it completely clear, if we are on two element domain and we have just one operation disjunction, then I claim that DF of N is just N plus one because it's not hard to see that it is sufficient to have tuple with all zeros and uh, uh, each tuple containing exactly one element equal to one and all other elements equal to zero. And it's not hard to see that using this junction, applying this junction to this tuples coordinate wise, we can generate any other tuple from zero one to the power n. Okay, another example is uh, if we have just one operation negation on two element domain, then it's clear that uh, we need to have half of all the tuples. For example, it is sufficient to have all tuples starting with zero and then apply negation, we can generate all tuples. But uh, we cannot uh, take small generating set and still generate all the tuples. Okay. And then we say that uh, algebra has the polynomial generated powers property or just PGP property if this df of n is restricted by a polynomial in n. And in the first example, we actually have this property. We have an even linear. And if uh, the f of n is exponential in n, then we say that the algebra has the exponential generated powers property or just EGP property. And this is our second example. Okay, let's remove example. Uh, what we know about these two properties? In 2015, I proved that every finite algebra has either PGP or EGP. And, and this is not obvious because uh, we could easily have something in the middle. And uh, yeah, I managed to prove that it's never the case. So for any finite algebra, either we have PGP, so it is sufficient to have polynomial many tuples to generate everything, or we need at least exponential many tuples to generate everything. And actually I proved more. I even showed how we can choose this uh, generating set of polynomial size. Suppose we have a tuple A1 and so on AM, then uh, we say that we have a switch if AI is not equal to AI plus one. And for example, if you look at this tuple, then you may see that it has three switches, switch from zero to one, from one to two, and from two to zero. And the next example, here we have two switches from three to four and from four back to three. Okay, and so what I proved, I proved that if a finite algebra has PGP properties, then there exists K, uh, such that a to the power n is generated by all tuples with the most k switches. Yeah, so uh, it means that if we have PGP properties, then we can generate everything just from this simple generating set. 
we just consider all tuples with the most k switches. And since k is constant, it's just polynomial many tuples. OK. And now, how we can use this? Again, uh, we consider the pi two restriction of QCSP, where first we have universal quantifiers, then existential quantifiers. And we want to solve this problem. For example, if this junction preserves uh, our constant language gamma, then it is sufficient to check this sentence, uh, this conjunctive formula, only for uh, all x is equal to 0 and for all x is but 1 equal to 0. And if we check only for this n plus 1 tuples, uh, then we know for sure that this sentence holds. And that's our uh, polynomial reduction to CSP. So what we do in general, assume that polymorphism of gamma has PGP property. Then uh, we can reduce the pi to restriction of QCSP uh, to usual CSP. But here we will need uh, constant relations because we want to assign concrete values to X variables. OK, let me show how it works. Let's prove this observation. What I actually do, I just, uh, um, I can just write explicitly this constraint satisfaction problem. Yeah, I consider all tuples with at most k switches. And k is a constant for concrete constant language, for concrete algebra polymorphism of gamma. Uh, so I, uh, for every tuple with at most k switches, I write this conjunction. So it's conjunction of my relations R. And also, I assign the corresponding values to all x variables. And you may see that this is a polynomial reduction. OK. Uh, uh, so now we know what to do if we have uh, the pi to restriction of QCSP. What we can do in general, like we have a sentence. Uh, and uh, for example, we have a sentence like this, where phi is some formula. What we can do? Actually, what we can do, we can easily move uh, universal quantifiers left. Like here in this example, we just uh, create size of A copies of a variable X, and we create size of A copies of our formula phi, where each phi i is obtained from phi by renaming X by Xi. And you may easily see that this is equivalent transformation. So we did not change uh, the result, but we moved all, uh, one universal quantifier left. Okay, and that is the idea. What we do in general, like we have a QSP instance, so our universal and existential quantifiers are mixed. We do exactly the same. We just move all universal quantifiers left one by one, and we get a huge formula. We have uh, many copies of each variable, and we have many copies of the original formula phi. So uh, you may notice that this formula is of exponential size. And uh, of course, it's a problem for the algorithm. Algorithms can never write this formula. But that's a good thing for being a mathematician. I can do this in my head. So I know uh, that I have this huge formula. And this is a pi 2 formula. So first, I have universal quantifiers and then existential quantifiers. And then I just apply my idea, my PGP idea, my PGP reduction. So what I know, I know that for the PGP case, it is sufficient to check all tuples with the most case switches. OK? Let's consider one of uh, the tuples like this. Like here in my example, I have a switch in the variable x2. I hope you can see my mouse. And uh, I don't have switch in x1, and I don't have switch in xt. OK? And what it means, actually, what we can do, we just keep all the variables having these switches. And we know that we have at most k switches, and k is constant. Yeah? So we keep at most k uh, variables, and we assign constants to the remaining variables. OK? And we know that uh, to check this huge formula of exponential size, which is equivalent to our original QCSP instance, we just need to check all tuples with most case switches. So we just choose k variables. Uh, we keep them. We assign constant uh, for the remaining variables. And we solve this instance with just k universal quantified variables. And it's not a problem to solve an instance with uh, k universal quantified variables. We just create many copies of uh, formula. And it's still polynomial because k is constant. OK, I hope it's clear. At least the idea is clear. And actually, the idea is very simple. We know how to solve the pi to restriction. And now we just convert any formula to pi to restriction and almost solve it. 
Okay, so that's how we can prove the following theorem. If we, if uh, polymorphism of gamma has PGP property, then uh, QCSP over gamma is polynomially reducible to CSP over gamma with all constant relations. Okay, notice that uh, very similar uh, result was obtained earlier by Chen, Martin, Carvalho, and Medellin, uh, but this result was obtained only for constant languages containing all constant relations. And here we have this reduction in general. Why gamma can be any, but we reduce to CSP over gamma with all constant relations. Okay, as a trivial corollary, we uh, obtain that for the PGP case, didn't miss the theorem, and from the theorem we can derive that for the PGP case, QCSP is uh, uh, either tractable or NP complete for any constant language gamma. And uh, if gamma contains all constant relations, then this uh, classification can be formulated in a very simple way. Like uh, if we have PGP property and we can use, then the problem is in P. And it's clear why, because if we have PGP properties and can reduce to usual CSP, and if we have we can use, then uh, this CSP can be solved in polynomial time. And uh, the problem isn't P complete if we have PGP property, but we don't have we can use, which means that uh, CSP is NP complete. Okay, and uh, Kubitschen conjectures that in all the remaining cases, so if we don't have PGP, which means by my theorem that we have EGP, the problem is P space complete. Okay, and uh, if this was true, it would be really great and simple classification of the complexity of uh, QCSP for any constant language. It would be really amazing. And we strongly believe uh, that uh, this conjecture uh, was correct when I started to work on this problem. And we had a lot of reasons to believe in this conjecture. For example, uh, if we replace P space hard, P space complete by one P hard, then we can almost prove this conjecture. So uh, let us... Mm, consider weak chain conjecture saying that for the EGP case, QCSP over gamma is coin P hard. So instead of P space, we have coin P hard. Okay? And almost the proof of this conjecture is like this. Uh, we know that if we have EGP properties, then we can define by a positive primitive formula, so encode somehow the complement to 3CNF. So we can actually encode the complement of 3CNF, and this problem is coin P hard. And it means that the only uh, small step um, remains to uh, prove coin p hardness because uh, if this definition is efficiently computable, then QCSP is coin p hard. We just uh, do this reduction. Another reason why we strongly believed in chain conjecture is that uh, this conjecture holds for all constant languages uh, containing all unary relations, so called conservative case. But unfortunately, this, uh, this conjecture doesn't hold. Um, in 2018, already, uh, Miroslav Olszak, together with Barnaby Martin, they found a constant language on a experiment domain, such that QCSP over gamma is coin P complete. And it was really unusual, because you, uh, before, all the complexity classes that could be achieved were just like this, P and P and P space. And then even worse, then we found a constant language on four element domains such that QCSP over gamma is DP complete, where DP is just conjunction of NP and coin P. And then really terrible class, we found the constant language on 10 element domains such that QCSP over gamma is theta to P complete. And actually when uh, we discovered this class, I even didn't know this complexity class theta to P. And uh, for us, it was so surprising and so unusual uh, that we called our paper with this result QCSP monsters, and we call these complexity classes monsters. Okay, uh, we not only found these uh, complexity classes, we also disproved chain conjecture completely. So we found a constant language having EGP properties such as QCSP over gamma is in P. So we know that in EGP case, we can uh, express uh, the complement to 3CNF, to, yeah. And uh, uh, this means that uh, for this constant language, we can define, but this definition is in, uh, of exponential size. So we actually obtained a lower exponential lower bound on the size of this uh, primitive positive uh, definition. And this was really surprising for us because we 
Yeah, usually if you can express, you can PP define some uh, strong constraint language, then you have a reduction and you proved hardness. Anyway, uh, now we have six complexity classes and I may ask whether there are other monsters, other complexity classes, or we have only six of them. Okay, uh, for you not to think that we only create monsters, we uh, also proved uh, some classification. So we uh, classified the complexity of quantified CSP for all constant languages on three element domain containing all constant relations. So we proved that in this case, QCSP is either in P, so so one polynomial time, or NP complete, or coin P complete, or P space complete. So in this case, we have only these four monsters, and that's it. Okay. Let's go back to our two questions. What makes problem easy and what makes problem hard? Yeah. With easy, uh, I showed you PGP reduction, which allows to reduce the complexity to NP. But now we know that we need something else because now we have a constant language for which the problem is simple, but it's not PGP. Okay, let's discuss the second question. What makes the problem hard or in our case, P space hard? Now I want to show you a uh, constant language, uh, which is, uh, for which I will prove uh, P-space hardness, and I claim that this is the most general proof of P-space hardness. By this, I mean that any other constant language for which the problem is P-space hard can be reduced to this one. Okay, this constant language is very simple. Uh, it's on four element domain, plus, minus, zero, and one. And it has just four relations, two ternary relations, R0 and R1, and two singleton unary relations, uh, plus and minus. Okay, the first relation, R0 talks like this. The first two variables are from the set plus and minus. And if x is 0, then y1 and y2 should be equal. So it's like if x is 0, so x is red, then y1 and y2 are connected. So they should be equal. And uh, similarly, I define the relation R1. Again, ternary relation. And uh, if x is 1, so x is blue, then y1 and y2 should be equal. And the problem of this constant language is that if we, we can apply universal quantifiers only to the uh, right variable, to x, and we can apply extension quantifier only to y1 and y2, because if we apply extension quantifier to x, then we should, uh, can always choose x equals plus, and that's it. That's it. In this case, it's always true. Okay. Anyway, we are going to draw diagrams like this. And by this, I mean that, uh, I, I mean this formula. And you may see that in this case, y1 and y2 are connected. If x1 is blue, so x1 is 1, x2 is 0, x3 is 1. In this case, y1 and y2 are connected. And so we have a simple way how to show formulas uh, over these relations. Okay, now how we prove hardness for this concrete constraint, constraint language. Suppose we have such a diagram. So we have plus here, minus here, and we have some connections here. Uh, we get a contradiction whenever we connected plus and minus. Okay? And uh, what it means that we connected plus and minus? It means that we have connection here, here, and here. And each connection uh, is just like this. So you can see that each connection is just a clause. And uh, the first two elements are connected whenever this clause holds. The same about uh, the second one and the third one. Okay, so you can see that this diagrams, diagram is equivalent to negation of 3CNF. And if you just add universal quantifiers here, it's equivalent to adding universal quantifiers here. And uh, this is just complement to 3CNF. And this means that this problem QCSP over gamma is going to be hard. Okay, we already proved P hardness. Now uh, let's prove P space hardness. Again, consider this formula. What we know? We know that uh, quantified 3 CNF is P space complete. Okay, that's how we're going to prove that for our constant language, we also have P space hardness. Consider this formula, the same formula, and we use the same diagram, but uh, I just rotate this diagram a bit. And now imagine that we want to add quantifiers like this. For every x1, there exists x2 for every x3. 
And the problem here is that I cannot just add uh, quantifier exist x2 because it will be useless. I can always put uh, uh, plus for the x2 variables and make it correct. Okay. So what I do instead? Instead, I do this trick. Like, okay, um, I just add the universal quantifier with x1 and x3 because I used them here. But instead of exist x2, I write this for exist y2 for every x2. And what it means first, uh, existential player makes a move. And if uh, the existential player um, chooses plus, so y1, uh, y2 is plus, since the only way for universal player to win is to play x2 uh, equals one to make this connection. Because the um, only way for universal player to win is to connect plus and minus to get a contradiction. So if the universal player, if the existential player plays y2 uh, equals plus, then uh, universal should play x2 equals one. And if the existential plays um, minus, then the universal should play x2 zero to get connection here. And this means that somehow existential player controls the universal player. And that's why we have equivalence here. So if you use this diagram and these quantifiers, then this is equivalent to this formula. And this formula is uh, equivalent to uh, complement to quantified 3CNF. And we know that quantified 3CNF is p-space complete, then the complement is also p-space complete. And so we prove that our problem is p-space hard. And I show you this example because, uh, as I said before, this is the most general proof of p-space hardness. And why I know this? Because I proved this uh, dichotomy. So what I proved? If I have a constant language containing all constant relations, then I claim that QCSP over gamma is uh, either p-space hard or it's in pi to p. So we have this dichotomy. We cannot express anything in the middle uh, using QCSP over gamma. And moreover, I have a simple criterion for the problem to be p-space hard. I say that the problem is p-space hard if and only if I can define by a positive primitive formula, formula gamma a relation R like this. And uh, I claim that from this relation R, I can define relation R0 and R1 as in my previous example. Not exactly, but uh, uh, the proof of p space hardness will be exactly like this. Exactly like the one I showed you. Okay, so I proved that for this case, if gamma contains all constant relations, I know that there is nothing between pi to p and p space. Now let's add other complexity classes we have that can be uh, defined as QCSP over gamma, like this. And uh, yeah, we know that for each of them but pi to p, we have the corresponding monster. And by this, I mean that yeah, there is constraint language, gamma, such as QCSP uh, over gamma, is complete in, the, in this complexity class. And so for me, the question was whether there is something between theta 2p and p space. Yeah, by the way, if you don't know what theta 2p, let me explain. This is a class of problems that can be solved in polynomial time if you're allowed to use a NP oracle logarithmic number of times. Okay, so this is a complex class we have. And the question was whether they, uh, we have something between theta 2p and p space. And for several months, I tried to show that uh, there is nothing there. And then I finally found constant language such that uh, uh, QCSP over this constant language is pi to p complete. And this constant language is on six element domain. So I found the missing monster, and now we have seven of them. And this is cool because I don't know, seven is much better number than six. And now what we need to do, we need to prove, um, I believe it's correct, heptachotomy, because we have seven classes. And uh, means that we actually need to prove a lot of different dichotomies, like right? we need to prove dichotomy between P and then P hard under Turing reduction. We need to prove dichotomy between P and coin P hard, between coin P and then P hard, between uh, the union of NP and coin P and the P hard. 
dichotomy between dp and theta 2p between theta 2p and pi 2p and between pi 2p and p space hard but this dichotomy uh, is almost proved and uh, i'm pretty sure that this one holds because i can prove this for gamma containing all constant relations okay so that's it uh, that's what we know for now we found another complexity classes uh, and now we believe that we have this i believe at least that we have this heptachotomy thank you for your attention We have time for questions. I mean, if there are questions. Yes. So you showed a dichotomy between the second level of the polonium time hierarchy and P space, right? Yeah, but um, only if, uh, if I have all concentrations, yeah. Yeah, I would ask, uh, could you construct intermediate problems by, for example, by restrictions on the quantifiers for allowing, for example, only a certain number of alternating uh, universal quantifier and essential quantifier blocks? I could, could imagine. Um, yeah, sure. I, okay. I believe if you uh, add this restriction, you can make something in the uh, intermediate. Yeah, yeah it's a usual construction of a problem that I agree. Okay. Okay, thanks. Uh, uh, just a small technical question. Uh, maybe I missed yeah. something. Uh, is the P space upper bound obvious here, so that we don't have anything higher than P space? Yeah, it's obvious because uh, it's ju it's on finite set. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's a sentence on finite set. Yeah, it's obvious that it's in P space. Okay, so just do brute force. Okay, thank you. Just because quantified Boolean formulas uh, in a yeah. space. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Can I ask a question, perhaps, on the yeah, outside? Sure. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so first of all, thank you for this brilliant talk as I wrote in Zoom. I really enjoyed it. I'm wondering if you can, cons you know, if people in, in your area consider systems of structures. So rather than looking at one structure, you know what it's. Uh, Mm -hmm. uh, what the size is now, you look at some, let us say, increasing sequence of structures, mm -hmm. and you want to describe the function of complexity. Would that change anything in this reason? Uh, so you see, like, when you look at gra graphs that increase mm -hmm. in, uh, and then you have some limits, so these graphs would be an infinite structure. Now, this, you can imagine that this kind of limits to some infinite structure, like a standard algebra or something like that. Um. I'm not sure I understood completely, uh, but you don't suggest uh, considering two relational structures like in one problem, yeah? Yes, in fact, I consider, I, I ask you if you consider sometimes sequences of structures, not just two, but really an infinite sequence of structures. Okay, okay. And they are and all generated somehow in the same way, but you know that their size increases. Would that make sense? Okay, and what question do we want to answer? Like uh, for every relation. So now, what I would like, actually, yes. So what I would like to obtain is something like uh, what people have obtained in graph theory is that they consider such sequences of graphs, uh -huh. and that these sequences actually represent, it turns out, a measurable function. So you can represent an infinite structure, very infinite structure, by looking at the sequence of finite approximations. So in this way, you could obtain some sort of complexity notion for infinite structures. This is what I mean. Yeah, I've read for infinite structures, so I would be interested to have some yeah, complexity I see. notions. I see. I see. I see. Yeah, it's interesting, but no, I never considered this. 